Who is Cy Hirsch and why does what he says matter? Mr. Hirsch exposed the cover-up of the 1968 My Lai Massacre of between 347 and 504 unarmed Vietnamese citizens and received the 1970 Pulitzer Prize for international reporting for his work. He has notably investigated the CIA's secretive project Azorian. Hirsch recently exposed the mistreatment of detainees at the Iraqi prison Abu Ghraib. Mr. Hirsch has the journalistic integrity to take the lonely path seldom seen towards the truth. Now this award-winning journalist and touchstone to a fading era of investigative journalism faces an administration that has set a new record on what can only be declared as a war on transparency. The Society of Professional Journalists, made up of 38 groups, wrote a letter to the Obama administration criticizing its overall politically driven suppression of the news. Hirsch's solution to the lapdog media that whitewashes Obama's dirty laundry is to shut down news networks like NBC and ABC and fire 90% of the mainstream editors, replacing them with real journalists who are outsiders and not afraid to speak truth to power. The Republic's in trouble. We lie about everything. Lying has become the staple, concluded Seymour Hirsch. The way to make government responsible is to hold it accountable. And the way to make government accountable is to make it transparent so that the American people can know exactly what decisions are being ma made, how they're being made, and whether their interests are being well served. The directives I am giving my administration today on how to interpret the Freedom of Information Act will do just that. For a long time now, there's been too much secrecy in this city. The old rules said that if there was a defensible argument for not disclosing something to the American people, then it should not be disclosed. That era is now over. Recently, Seymour Hersh said that the raid which killed Osama bin Laden in 2011 is one big lie and that not one word of the Obama administration's narrative on what happened is true. Speculation that the Obama administration may have embellished or outright lied about the true account of what happened has persisted mainly because the White House has refused to publicly release images of bin Laden's body. Although the White House said the corpse was immediately buried at sea in line with Islamic tradition, it quickly emerged that this was not standard practice. Numerous analysts have claimed that bin Laden had in fact been dead for years and that the raid on his alleged compound in Pakistan was little more than a stunt. It's on record that Steve Pachinik, uh, who worked as the top deputy to Henry Kissinger and who also is a high-level counsel on foreign relations member, was interviewed back in April of 2002 and said that bin Laden was dead and that was on ice and that in the future he would be used at a politically expedient time to bolster the government in the eyes of the people. He died of Marfan syndrome. Uh, Bush Jr. knew about it. The intelligence community knew about it. CIA had already sent a position way before under the Clinton administration to see him at the American Hospital in Dubai. He was already very sick from Marfan syndrome and he was already dying. So nobody had to kill him. He had El Zwahiri, who was a physician with him, who is still a physician. I don't know where he is. But we knew he was already dead by 9 11. Uh, it was very clear that he was dying. At Tora Bora, he probably died. Tommy Franks, general, said uh, accidentally that he died. But then Madeleine Albright in 2003, on December 17th, went on Fox News program and said that he was dead and on ice and that the Bush administration was thinking about rolling him out during the 2004 election if they needed it. But then because of that coverage, the inside baseball was they didn't. Other questions also persist, such as why the narrative and timeline of the raid has changed multiple times. Why the White House initially claimed that Situation Room photos showed Obama watching the raid live when in fact there was a blackout on the live feed. And why neighbors in the immediate area surrounding the compound said with absolute certainty that they had never seen bin Laden and that they knew of no evidence whatsoever to suggest he lived there. You know that if somebody new comes in your street, in your area, you always know. The next house is my other house, which I rented to my cousin friend. I never seen anything like that, and that's why I can't believe that. And to be honest, it's not true. Osama, maybe some other people, but Osama is not a, you know, the bird who came, fly, went to the inside, because this is restricted area. 
When we yeah. came out from outside to come here to always army will say, oh, where's your ID card? Yeah. So it's not believed. They were pounding Pakistani civilians and uh, poor hapless uh, the villagers there with their drone attacks, with the hellfires and with their reaper uh, missiles. So they have caused something like 2,500 casualties when the man that they were hunting was actually hiding uh, in, in one of the urban centers of Pakistan. Now this is remarkable. If you want to believe what I call a Lewis Carroll fa fairy tale that bin Laden who the most hunted man since since 2002 in the world decided he's going to the one safe place to live is in a compound 40 miles from well, the look, main that's capital what, of Pakistan. That, I'm sorry, it goes against the grain. I've been doing this all my life, you know, and and uh, all I can tell you is I understand the consequences. I've been a reporter, as you know, for 50 years in this town. Not you know, everything we, turns out the way you think it's going to turn out. Also, even in well, your own career, I mean, I, I I would argue that a lot of the stories I wrote pretty much were pretty much on mark. John Baum, Infowars.com. What do you think about the FBI saying that there's a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation? The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks. I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security while sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is designed to do. You watch the Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Become a member, share your membership, and help take the InfoWar to the next level.